Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. No, we haven't put any videos out for a few weeks with the holidays, but we had fun with family and friends, and I think you guys all know how Doug loves to cook. He made this amazing beef wellington. He really surprised me in how well it was. He actually made his own puff pastry dough, took him a couple days, and he kept folding it over and doing all the different layers with it, so that was kind of cool. You know, how you stick it in the refrigerator and lay it out again. And then the piece of beef he got was really good. Got it from one of the local butchers, and he made these two nice big beef wellingtons. He actually even took some of my cookie cutters after he wrapped it with the uh, puff pastry and put little Christmas trees on it to make it really festive. Uh, family enjoyed it. We had enough to give everybody leftovers to take home with the twice baked potatoes. It was an amazing meal. So we're back at it here today, and I'm going to take you through some of the things I do here in the greenhouse. I have some trays tray here to plant. I've got two of them, and this is yeah red cloud which is a tatsoi. It's 10 days old from when I seeded it now. You can see it's pretty big here. So I'm gonna get that in the channels I just washed behind me. Got the cucumbers going, and we got the tomatoes going, and the green beans. So I have to do some trellising with the cucumbers, and I'll show you how I do that, and what I do with the first cucumbers on the plants. I'm gonna show you training the green beans, dropping the bobbins down, and training those to go up. And I think I got some tomatoes to pollinate, so it should be pretty good. So stay tuned. So I'm going to start planting the red cloud here, and like always, the first couple rows are a pain to get out of the, the um, tray here, so you kind of got to be careful. They can get a little bit mush, but not too bad. Well, I broke that one a little bit, but that's okay. I'll plant him on the end so he doesn't see how I broke it, because I mushed it. But I'll get these guys all in here. Pull the tray across here. I got some nice Swiss chard going next to it. Look at these guys in here. I can't believe these guys are only 10 days old and they're this big. And like always, I like to turn them upside down as I pull them apart. It just makes the leaves come apart a little bit easier. Okay, let's get the rest of this two rows out of here. Oh, that came out easier. After many years of doing this, I found that if you press on the channels a little bit, they go over the rails pretty easily. There we go. Got that guy in, and I'll hook him up. Oop, got to turn on the water to this thing. So I'm going to ask you guys for some advice here. For years and years, I grew mint back here in this section. It was a great seller for the grocery stores because they had a hard time finding quality mint for them and you know how people like mojitos and um, mint juleps in the summertime. But the problem is the mint got so big and dropped their trellises or whatever down here and it all took root because you know how it grows crazy out in the fields. Well, I've been pulling this out now I think for four years and I cannot get rid of it. So if anybody has any suggestions of uh, organic natural herbicide I could spray on this to kill it, that would be greatly appreciated. So the other day I was out here. These are my uh, paste tomatoes, San Marzano. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six buckets of them. So that's 12 plants that we're just doing just for Doug and I because he loves to make his paste. And I noticed these guys were a little bit wimpy and they still are a little bit wimpy so they weren't getting enough water. So I turned it up, I think it was like two days ago, and look what happened to my Rybolskis. They went ballistic. Look how big they are and look how happy they are and they're getting their flowers. So really got to pay attention to your plants and they'll tell you what they need and these guys definitely need some more water so I'm going to go ahead and turn it up just maybe an extra 10 seconds more each time it waters. So here are the tomato plants and Doug hasn't had a chance to get in here because he always takes care of the plants for me. So you can see there's a few suckers, you got some bottom leaves here but he's letting the plants get some energy but I noticed that we're getting some flowers so these guys need to be pollinated. Like always I use the uh, electric toothbrush to uh, pollinate these guys because it just shakes it just a little bit to pollinate it. The reason we use the electric toothbrush, like I said before, is that we don't have enough plants to have bees in here, the bumblebees, to pollinate them naturally, so we go ahead and just hand pollinate everybody. So now I'm with my cucumbers here, and look at all these flowers. Now cucumber plants don't need to be pollinated, which is a good thing. It'd be a pain in the butt trying to get these guys when they get so tall. But look at these nice little cucumbers. Now we take off the bottom cucumbers to get the plant to have more energy as it grows up, but I like to let them get a little bit bigger than this before I take them off because they are the most delicious cucumber you've ever eaten. The whole family fights over these. I gave a couple to Kelsey the other day and she was so excited. 
So as you can see the cucumbers here, they need to be clipped back up again and Doug needs to come take off these tendrils because you want to take these off because they'll wrap around the other plants and they'll wrap around the baby cucumbers and make a mess of everything. So he's got to get his butt back in here, but I can't complain. He's in the shop right now. He's got my old Explorer out, which uh, the back end went on, out on it a couple years ago and it's been parked in the barn. And he is replacing, I think, the rear axle and some universal joints or something on it. But he's been working on it really hard and he had to order some parts. So it'll be nice to have the Explorer back again because it goes great through the snow. So the rear uh, wheel bearing here is toast. This thing's got 180,000 miles on it. And I pulled this off. The bushings are all bad. So I ordered a new knuckle, this uh, loaded knuckle for this rear wheel bearing. And at the same time, I decided to pull the axle out because I'm not sh how sh sure how good these UV joints are. So I'm going to replace the axle and this rear uh, knuckle on this car. And boy, what a pain in the butt. Living in the rust belt makes working on cars very hard because everything's rusted. I had to heat up three bolts and it just wasn't too fun. So I'll get this cleaned up and then the parts should be here in about a week. Nice. Okay, over by my green beans now. And you can see they're starting to really grow. So I'm going to drop some betel bobbins down to the strings and train them to go up the strings. I did have a few that didn't come up, so I'm going to go through and just put some seeds in here because they do germinate pretty well in the growing medium here and replace the holes. Even though they're going to be a little bit younger, it still works. I have enough time in between um, harvests to have the new ones come up. Because usually, I think last year, I got like five or six different harvests off the whole row of the green beans. So it's a pretty good haul on such a small area. So my CSA programs contacted me a couple times already to see when the green beans are going to be ready, the tomatoes and the cucumbers. Because nothing better than fresh green beans and, and um, tomatoes and cucumbers in the winter time. And these green beans, they're Fortex. They're usually about this long and they're so sweet and tender that I end up eating them raw. And the tomatoes, you know, nothing's better than a tomato onion sandwich. And the cucumbers are best raw. So they're pretty excited about this. And, you know, with these lights that we put up, what a difference they have made in the growth of everything. And, of course, having the right nutrients. But I know the lights have done good. And we do have the greenhouse a little bit warmer this year. And that's making a big difference for that. It's a little bit hot in here for me to work, but that's okay. I can deal with it. So like I said, Doug is out working on the car right now, so I thought I'd sneak in here real quick and show you what else he's been working on with his leather. He comes in here when I'm working in the greenhouse, punches out all this leather. So here he has the start of some of his uh, different purses and bags that he's making. Some of it he has dyed already, some of it's getting ready to dye, and then he also has a different type of leather. I think it's called chrome leather, I'm not sure. But here's a purse that he made with that. It's nice and soft, and he's using magnets for closures and stuff. It's really nice. And then this is my favorite thing that he's made. And he won't give it to me, but maybe I'll steal it. It's like a little tote bag that you can carry uh, to a farmer's market. And it's got like a corset bag on it. And he got these really cool looking beads. And he's doing some more fringy stuff. So he did go and uh, go to Weaver Leather and got a bunch more fringe to make different types of bags. And also he got some um, hide-on leather. So he's going to make some bags with this on it. Isn't that cool looking? So hide on leather with the fringe is going to be cool. This thing took him forever to make. It is a uh, like a briefcase to carry your computer and different things. It's got all kinds of different pockets inside. Oh, he's got paper to keep it um, open. But he's got different pockets in here and all hand stitched. Little by little he does it. I mean, he's so such a perfectionist that it's just like, it looks like a machine did it. I can't believe it. And this would be great if somebody's a painter or a craft person because he made these little uh, tote thing. I don't know where he gets all these ideas, but he gets them. And it's got like, you can put paintbrushes in here or, or paints or, you know, whatever you wanted to do. But it's kind of cool. So he's got two sides on that. Then he needed a new shaving kit. So he decided to make some shaving kits. So he buys these zippers and he actually puts them in. Now look at that. And he puts um, uh, fabric inside to line it. Pretty cool. So he made a couple of shaving kits. Made me a pair of slippers. He's got to finish uh, gluing on the um, fur for me. And he's got these other little purses. And this is one of his bigger sellers. Um, I have a purse like this in brown, and I want him to make me a black one, so it's really cool. And again, it's got the magnet, and it's got the really cool hardware on it, and the straps, which he makes adjustable. So, yeah, he really thinks them all out. So this is what Doug does while I'm back here working. 
So the other day I came in from the greenhouse to see what, what was going on, you know, wanting to get a drink of water and take a break for a minute. And Doug had made this shelf in that little bit of time. It's a piece of walnut that came from the farm here. He planed it down, stained it, and then he used leather strapping to hang it up. And now he's got all his different dyes up there and he's keeping himself organized. And he's got these little bin here that he's got all his hardware in. I've never seen him so organized in my life. <laughs> it's really kind of cool. He's really gotten into this and he's gotten really good at it. And then over here is his workstation. And it's so amazing what he does. He has to punch the hole for each one of his stitches, you know, because there's no way you can take a needle and go through leather because you can, you know, see how thick that is. There's no way. So he punches every single one of those holes. He has these punches here and he uses this special mallet. And this is an old cutting board so you can tell how many times he's been punching through here. And he individually punches each hole. And look how straight that is. It's just amazing. So since our farm is named Bradwood Farm, so Doug got this stamp and it says Bradwood Leather on it. It's pretty cool. It's a real heavy duty little stamp that he, I think he gets the leather wet and then he sticks it on, it punches it on there and he holds it on the leather and then hits it with his mallet here and does the um, indentation there for Bradwood Leather. So you're probably wondering how the heck did Doug get into leather after all the other stuff that he does? Well, he wanted to get a belt and he could never find a good belt that lasts. You know, you buy a belt at the store, it maybe lasts six months. So he decided to make his own. And that got him with the bug to making all the leather products. And you know how Doug's into timber framing. Kind of looks scary hearing me holding this stuff. But he had to make uh, covers for him so they stay, uh, don't get dull, so the blades don't get dull. So he made these covers for his axe. And I think this thing is called a picaroon. I'm not really sure, but he made a cover for it. You know, it slides on and off pretty, pretty easily, I think. Maybe not. So you can keep that going. And he made a little sleeve here so you don't hurt the wood. So it's kind of cool what he does. Well, I can't get this thing back on. He's going to get mad at me. So I got everything done in the greenhouse I wanted to get done today. So I'm taking a little break with my Kean boy here. Hope you like seeing what we do. And I hope you enjoy seeing Doug's leather work because I really enjoy it too. So like always, leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And I'll see you guys next video. Mm -hmm.